Hey everyone, Jill here. So I'm back in the kitchen, which means I'm up to making something. Um, and it's gonna be a concoction to help me get through the winter um, cold free. <laughs> okay, it is elderberry syrup. So elderberries are great. Um, again, I'm going back old school, okay? Um, this winter, I, I plan on doing a lot of the old school remedies um, that our grandparents used to use on our parents. And unfortunately, some of our parents used them on us and we cried as kids, but that's just how it was. Um, so with elderberry syrup, to begin with, elderberry is really high in antioxidants, um, which is great. Okay, so it's, it's a superfood. Okay, um, but it's not something that you want to put like in a smoothie because it will upset your stomach um, and dried, they are toxic. Okay, so this is something that you want to keep away from the animals um, when you're working with them. Don't eat them out of the bag. Okay, um, you want to boil them down and, and make a syrup. Once you've made your syrup, you're going to take um, about two tablespoons a day um, for maintaining during the winter. If you catch a cold, then you want to bump that up to four. If you're dealing with children, I would recommend um, one tablespoon a day for a child um, to kind of play and see how, how it works out for them. And then um, if they catch a cold, then I would go to two. The reason why I'm telling you to um, monitor it is because it will upset the stomach. It will act as a laxative, okay? So when it comes to the kids, and even with yourselves, play around with the dosage a little bit, but do not exceed four tablespoons a, a day, um, just simply because I don't know what the results on that would be, okay? So I'm gonna be using my Instapot um, because I wanna get the syrup done quickly. My favorite brand um, for today, because this is what I got today, um, is Organic Elderberries from Source Nutrition. Um, I picked it up from Amazon. Um, it's a natural cold remedy, it's a powerful antioxidant, and it's wild harvested, okay? Which is perfect for me um, because I do not want to add any toxins. And my goal is to get away from the over-the-counter um, cold medications. The recipe that I'm going to show to you, um, there's a lot of recipes out there. So you can, you know, definitely Google recipes, but it's one that I did earlier and I really liked the taste of it. Um, elderberry has a very sweet taste to it. So especially with kids, you don't have to worry about that yucky, oh, I don't want to take it um, taste, okay? Um, it does have a sweet taste to it, but the recipe that I'm going to use, I'm going to also add local honey to it. I'm going to add um, a cinnamon stick to it, and then I'm also going to add um, one drop of East, uh, lemon essential oil, okay? So let's get started. In the recipe, they call one cup of elderberry to four cups of water. So, of course, I'm going to be making a big batch of this, storing it in the refrigerator, so I'm going to be using much more than what the typical recipe calls for. So, let's go. So, just to give you an idea as to um, how much in the bag compared to what the recipe calls for, um, I have two cups of elderberries in my big cup here and a one pound bag, this is what I have left over. So I have about a cup um, left over. So when I go to make another batch later as I run out, I will still have enough. Okay, so since I used two cups of elderberry, I'm gonna use um, eight cups of water, which means for every one cup of elderberry, you're using two cups of water, uh, I'm sorry, four cups of water. Just slowly pour it in. So there's the elderberry in the pot. Now I'm gonna add cinnamon stick. 
I like to buy the big jar of cinnamon stick because I use a lot of it. So I'm going to take um, three cinnamon sticks. The recipe for a single batch calls for one cinnamon stick, but because I'm doing a double batch and with the size of the cinnamon sticks, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and use three. Next, I'm going to add lemon essential oil. Now, you can use regular lemon, um, and you have to be very careful when using the essential oils, only because one drop of the lemon uh, of the essential oil is equal to 20 lemons. That's a lot, okay? So I'm gonna be very, very careful um, in dropping one drop into my batch. But if you're using regular lemons, I would recommend uh, slicing it into thin slices and then um, placing it into the pot. So now I'm ready to go. I've got the Instapot on. I'm going to put the lid on because I am going to steam it for the first uh, 10 minutes. So I want to make sure that I'm on the steam setting. I'm setting it for soups and broths. I'm going to drop this down to 10 minutes and then let it start. Okay, so I let it um, go in the pressure cooker for uh, 30 minutes to make sure that the berries got um, soft. And so now I'm just gently stirring it as it begins to cool down. And then once it cools, I'm going to go ahead and add my honey to it. It looks like at this point, you can see it's watery, but the berries are still intact, which they're going to be, okay? So don't don't worry if, if your berries are intact. Um, you don't want them to, to dissolve, okay? Um, when we go to strain it, that's when we're gonna mash it. See what I mean? We'll mash it and, and get more of the liquid and um, good antioxidants out of it. But for now, like I said, I am going to let this cool down. Um, should take about 20 minutes to cool down and then I will add honey to it and begin to put it in jars. Um, what I recommend at this point is to start getting your jars out. I have mine right here. You wanna make sure that they are clean and sterile. Um, you don't wanna put this yummy goodness into dirty jars because then you'll contaminate it and you won't be able to use it. Okay, now that the el um, elderberries are cool, I'm gonna go ahead and strain them because I wanna remove the cinnamon stick and the elderberries um, from the liquid. So, simple process. Um, all you do is, I've got a container here and strainer. Um, and I'm using a fine mesh strainer. That way I get anything um, that was small out. So again, I've got my pot with the elderberries in it and using a fine mesh strainer, I'm straining the liquid and the cinnamon stick, um, cinnamon stick out and I'm straining it into a clean container. You always want to make sure that your containers um, are clean and sterile because you don't want to enter any bacteria uh, into anything that you're going to be ingesting. So I've got some um, elderberries still in the pan and I'm just going to scoop them out so that way I can make sure I get all of that juice. So I'm gonna set that aside so I can wash that later. And what's nice with the Instapot is I can just throw it in the dishwasher. And then gently squeeze the elderberries to get the rest of the juice out. Because I wanna get as much of this good stuff as possible. I'm using something small um, to do it. Um, 
normally I would use a masher, but my masher is dirty right now. So continue to, to press on the elderberries. You can see where the juice is coming to the top. Um, just continue pressing it through the strainer. Even do like a little stir. And then continue pressing that down. Okay, so I've gotten um, pretty much all of the liquid out. Um, it's kind of got that sandy texture to it. There's still a little bit more liquid left into it, but um, it, that's okay. This, at this point, I can either throw it away or I can put it in the composter, um, which is what I'm going to do because it will be good for the soil. So let me take this and set it aside. And as a tip, if you don't have a fine uh, mesh strainer, you can take a regular colander and line it with cheesecloth, okay? Or um, you can buy those cheesecloth bags um, that are great for making um, cheese. So let me set this aside. And I'm gonna add, I ended up with about that much liquid, okay? And I'm gonna add half a cup of honey. Uh, my measuring cup is dirty, so I had to kind of eyeball it. But um, I'm using local honey. The reason why I'm using local honey is because local honey, um, the bees pick up the pollen in the local area, and that helps with allergies. So if you suffer from allergies, go over to your farmer's market, take a tablespoon of local honey um, every day, and that helps build the histamine in your system so that way when you come in contact to uh, the trees or the grass or the flowers that you're allergic to, instead of having to take an antihistamine, um, you will already have developed the immunity um, from taking the honey. So I'm gonna add half a cup of local honey to this. And the other thing that's great about the, using the honey is, um, it adds a, uh, an additional sweetness. Uh, sometimes elderberry, depending on, on what you get, can be a little bitter, um, but this adds a little sweetness to it. If you do not want honey, uh, but you want to, do, to make uh, elderberry syrup sugar-free, um, monk, uh, um, monk juice, I think is what it's called, um, is good. So all I'm doing is I, I added the honey, I'm stirring it around, and if you want to do like additional um, zaps to, to really purify this, um, to build up the immunity system, you can add uh, powdered ginger. You don't wanna do fresh because fresh has a tendency to mold. So you could add powdered ginger to this, um, or when you're cooking it and you add the cinnamon, you can also add whole cloves. And that will give you some additional um, immunity building um, properties. So, and like I said, you can use cheesecloth to strain if you don't have um, a fine strainer or uh, you don't want to deal with a strainer, you can put all of your uh, mixture into a cheesecloth bag and just squeeze it over the bowl. So I'm gonna take one of my mason jars that I have clean and sterilized, grab my handy funnel because I will make a mess if I don't. And this is a quart sized jar. and you see how much I made. Grab my spoon here, because I want all of that goodness.
And there. Because this is cool already, I can put a lid on it and put it in the fridge. You want to store this in the fridge because um, there are no preservatives in it and it will um, go rancid on you. So uh, keep it in the fridge. It will last you about two weeks. So, you know, if you're taking it every day, um, this jar will last about two weeks. I also recommend because you're using the honey in it that before you use, you take it each day, just do a quick shake. So a couple of other fun things that you can do with the um, elderberry syrup is if you have kids that, um, you know, they're not digging, taking syrup on a spoon because they think it's medicine, okay? What I found on Amazon was um, beef gelatin. So there's a, a recipe out there where you can make gummy bears. So instead of the liquid they recommend, you would use elderberry syrup. So part of that recipe is beef gelatin. And then I found these really cute molds on Amazon. They're teddy bears. And they're, they come in a four pack um, with two little squeezers. So what you can do is you can make it fun for the kids by putting them in the molds um, and then let them set and then let them, you know, pop a couple of them each day, um, every morning. I would say give them, you know, two each morning because they are small. Um, make it a treat. And then in the evening, you know, like at lunchtime, give them one. And then in the evening, you know, give them one because you're trying to, to equate, you know, equate to the um, tablespoon method, okay? So, you know, some kids, like I said, are really funny about, um, they see liquid on a spoon, they automatically go to, it's medicine and I don't want medicine. So make it fun for them, okay? Make them some, some gummies, okay? And that's something that you could also pop into um, snack bags when you're on the go. So if you're gonna be out for the day, and you want to make sure that you know you maintain everybody's immunity this makes it portable to do okay so i hope you enjoyed this video on how to make elderberry syrup to keep your immunity going all winter long and if you have any questions or comments please pm me um, i'm always happy to respond and thank you very much for joining me have a great one